VRB 1992-2608 West Morrison Avenue. Tawanda Anthony Land Development. This is case VRB 1992. The property address is 2608 West Morrison Avenue. The request is as follows. The applicant is seeking to reduce the west side yard setback from seven feet to zero feet, the accessory structure setback from three feet to zero feet, and the building separation from five feet to one feet to vest the existing conditions. The property is owned RS60 and was purchased in 2018. The existing single family residence was constructed in 1926. the property. Here's Wes Morrison and here's the subject property. Here's a view facing the front of the property. Here's a view facing west. And here's a view facing east and here you can see the addition on the side or on the west side yard. Um, that's in question today. That's before you. This is a site plan. You can see the structure in the rear. This is the accessory structure, and you're asking to reduce the setback from three feet to zero feet. And here's the side yard reduction from seven feet to zero feet. And they're also asking for the um, building separation between the primary structure and the accessory structure. Are there any questions for staff? Thank you. Peter Rochalk, uh, architect, 4745 Patagonia Place, Land of the Lakes, and I have been sworn. Uh, I think Tawanda presented the topic very well. Um, I'm assisting the owners uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jack Leo, who are currently out of town completing their medical training. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to emphasize that what we are requesting does not represent a change in any kind to the footprint of either the accessory building, the main building, or the carport. They're simply seeking to vest existing conditions so that we can make some uh, repairs that we would like to make, specifically you can see that okay? Uh, yeah. I'll zoom in. The principal hardship is a matter of use. There are two columns here and here which limit the size of the gate so that it's almost impossible to get a normal sized car in there without scraping it. Um, so we'd like to take those and move them aside to enable wider gates and at the same time strengthen the existing structure without changing its configuration. If, it's, if the storm that we just escaped had, had run through Tampa, it could well have removed a piece of this roof and uh, caused damage to either property or persons. We'd like to reinforce that and hold it down properly. Um, so the, the only other, uh, those two hardships, basically one of use and one of, of safety, are what we're concerned about. To date, we have permitted and executed the uh, reinforcement of some of the subfloor uh, posts under the main structure, and we would like to submit a permit application to move these two columns and to modify these gates. So again, we're, we're not seeking to enlarge or change the footprint in any way. We're happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, we'll hear from the audience first. Okay. Uh, that part of it. Uh, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak uh, 
for this application or against it, please come forward, state your name, address, and if you've been sworn. Yes, hi, my name is John Stedman. I'm at uh, 2610 West Morrison Avenue, uh, just to the west of the house that he wants to uh, make to the zero lot line. I have been sworn in. Um, I'd like to read a statement, but I brought the letters for you to have also for the record. my phone <laughs> phone works there you go okay thanks so um like i said um i'm writing to oppose the variance requested for 2608 west morrison avenue um as stating the application number urb 19 slash 92 which is scheduled to go before the board tonight um obviously in the variance request they um, requested that the west yard set setback um go from seven feet to zero feet and um, also the accessory building rear yard setback from three to zero feet. Um, and the separation of accessory structure from principal structure from five foot eave to eave to one foot um, for the variance. Our concern is really is the permanent and possible future increase in the invasion of our personal space at 2610 West Morrison. Uh, the current carport roof has an extension, as you see, that rests on the fence dividing the property, as well as a gutter downspout that drops into our yard and drains on our property. Once a variance is given, then any remodel or rebuild will be at the zero lot line. This is not the precedent that is needed or desired in the South Tampa neighborhood. Uh, we may choose to live close to each other, uh, but we don't want to live on top of each other. Our goal is to protect our rights while helping our neighbors accomplish what they want to accomplish. A zero lot line variance is not the answer for both parties. One solution that was proposed, there's many, was from a civil engineer um, support the carport roof with the steel beams that are supported by posts, which can be moved to the edge of the carport, thus giving our neighbors more room to open their car doors. Um, also, maybe extending the roof line north or south to give them more room um, so they can stay out of, the, uh, out of the elements. If the roof line is extended to the property line, um, um, The solution, okay, we maintain the original roof line is better than the solution as it will move the cost effective for the property owners and less structural encroachment on us. We're also concerned with the encroachment of the accessory building in the southwest portion of the property. The roof line is already less than two feet from the existing fence line on our property, which is considerably outside uh, the existing building codes. We're extremely worried that allowing for a zero lot line variance for this structure will lead to a large and taller detached structure that encroaches into our backyard and privacy. So what we're urging is for you to help us come to a conclusion that it's good for both parties while abiding by the current building codes. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Please come forward, state your name, address, and if you've been sworn. Darby Stedman, I'm at 2610 West Morrison Avenue, and I have been sworn in. Um, I just wanted to give you all some visual um, views of the, what we're talking about. Um, how do they move this up and down? Oh, look at that. Okay. So this is from our backyard. Um, and as you can see, th what they're talking about are these two posts right here and here. This is an existing, um, like, shed that was, I don't know when it was erected. And this is an eight-foot fence that is an eight-foot fence supporting this shed structure. Um, and these posts that are back here. If I understand it correctly, um, I did try and reach out to the, to the people who um, put the variants in. No one responded, so I have not had contact with them to, to have this discussion, especially since the owners really aren't here. I, I, I haven't had the opportunity to be in contact with them. Um, so, uh, so the question is, is to move these posts out and what we were trying to do as neighbors is how can we help them accomplish that because we understand i mean i would love to have a carport i don't have this i live next door and i have a singular driveway and i 
when I bring in groceries and my children, we get wet. That's just the way it is. So I am slightly jealous of this. I understand what they want to do. And what you can see is these posts are next to this door was not originally there, evidently, back in the 20s when they built the house. This was built at some other time. So they're trying to fix that by moving these posts, which I can understand, but actually they're really not fixing it. So the hardship of use actually does not work out the way that they've described it. Because by moving these posts, right, they're getting closer to the fence line, they're still going to have this thing, but now you have this car door, they still gotta go here and the door opens the other way. Wouldn't it make more sense if we're talking about use, instead of coming towards my house, why don't they just go further out in their own area, that way, they can move the car up and not be in this stairway area. That way they're getting out of their car door and walking up the stairs into a doorway that's going to be open. This actually is not ease of use. What they're proposing just continues the lack of use. You, it's hard to do all of that. Anyway, so there's that. The other thing is the existing structure, as you can see here, at some point in time, the existing structure became an eight-foot fence, then they put this, this on it. The former owners, uh, two owners ago, they did have like grill equipment and things like that right there, so I think that's what they used it for. I do, yes sir. Um, so anyway, this actually, the way it's done right now, this is my yard, this is our side yard, and the water now comes to our side yard. Once they move this, I'm once they move this out or where does that water go how is that going to be addressed i don't know so that does that does provide or that's a hardship on us um encroaching into it that's okay thank you i just wanted you guys to have a visual thank you name, sure. name address and if you've been sworn yes my name's bill oliver i live at 2606 west morrison which is the property to the on the east side opposite side from the carport and I have not been sworn I've got okay. two questions <laughs> I came in late I do and actually that's easy for me because I just want to ask two questions the first question is the nature of the variance. Is a variance something that stays with the land permanently? My thought is, is that we might not want to vest these encroachments on a permanent basis if the site is, if the house, the house is old, built in 1926, if it's ever torn down, if they tear down the garage, or what used to be the garage, which is now a recreational room. It would make sense to me to restore the current zoning required setbacks so I don't so I think earlier tonight you know, we talked about a non uh, non-conforming uses this is apparently a non-conforming use I don't think the neighbors mind it being continuing to be a non-conforming use but if and when that lot is ever redeveloped it would make sense to go back to the original legal setbacks and having said that, oh, and my second question, which I forgot, um, is was the question about the roof line over the carport. I don't think it was, it was clear, and I don't think I understand, if the intention is to e extend that existing roof line uh, further towards the property line, or if it was to maintain that shed-style roof um, over uh, that, that area. And I, that's something that could be clarified. Good evening, Steve McElhaney. Um, I have been sworn. I, I am not affiliated with this project in any way, and I have no connection with it. I, I did respond to some neighbors' emails regarding their interest in understanding what was being proposed. I reached out to Mr. Gottschalk, and I asked him exactly what they were trying to do. I met out on the site with some of the neighbors, some that spoke already. And um, one of the things that is unique about New Suburb Beautiful is that most of the properties do not meet the current code. Um, they, 
they were built in the 20s and the setbacks that they currently have are three feet and they also allowed for encroachments um, beyond that for portico shares which is what this house has and what they're proposing to do is to uh, realign the portico share move the column so that a car will fit underneath that shed area remodel that and remove the any encroachment that goes beyond the property line and like I said I met out there with several of the folks I explained that to them and I also explained that um, you know the hardships related to this are the fact that in the 20s the setbacks were entirely different um, uh, you know mr. Oliver knows he's been with the city just like I was with the city years ago that you know once you grant a variance it's granted um, I don't know that you can condition that on no redevelopment but I did ask them that no second floor be added to the portico share and they were agreeable to that so you might consider that in your deliberations and that it not be enclosed and that it be remained open as a single story portico share uh, I was in, and supporting them only because I know th the other properties throughout this area can't meet the code never will meet the code and if anybody redevelops as we all are redeveloping for our families and you know adding rooms and things like that uh, you will see more and more coming through from new suburb beautiful that simply have a hardship because of that um, I think re reasonable restrictions on them for the redevelopment of this um, <clears throat> are practical and should be considered by the board but but I am here supporting a reasonable redevelopment of that property thank you would anybody else like to speak on this application on either for it or against okay I see none so board uh, do you have any questions for the applicant and or staff uh, mr. pastor a question for the applicant now that we've seen the picture with the what appears to be an aluminum shed roof if you were to move the columns out would you be proposing to keep that aluminum shed roof we were proposing to you to leave it but we were also uh, proposing to to support it in other words the columns yeah. that we want to build will be vertical and have a diagonal component to to hold okay. that we share their concern about the permanence of that we want to make it permanent and safe we also share their concern about the drainage we intend to route, route that drainage to a new strip drain that's currently there uh, improve it and run it so that it doesn't uh, spill over into the neighboring property and by the way I I'm the applicant my phone number is available nobody has called me that's objected tonight I'd be happy to discuss it with anyone. Um, um, you did I, not speak at all about the accessory structure that's requesting two variances. Well, the accessory structure, we don't intend to modify that in any way in terms of the footprint. It's there. We don't want to tear it down. It right. But you just property. didn't address it at all, so we right. have no. The only reason it's addressed, we were told that we need to address all the all the all the things that are currently not meeting the current code. Okay. So it exists exactly as it does when the property was purchased by these Correct. owners and it's not being modified. Right. Okay. I have a question. Um, I don't, I, I understand wanting to expand the carport, but, but your reasoning was to, for the gates. Why do the gates have to be there? Why do they have to be there? Yes. Well, they're, they're there now, and we would like to still have them as a matter of privacy. But, and by the way, this was very carefully worked out. They, by moving those columns, we absolutely have enough room to open the doors on both sides and walk around. Uh, that's, a, that's an actual de depiction of the car, of a, one of the cars that the owners have. But my question is, you say you're not moving the space of the carport you just want to make the gates larger with the col where the columns currently are the gates can't be made any there's no point making the gates wider because you can't get past the column 
if the column is moved, then we can make the gates wider to match the width from, from the steps to the, to the new columns. Those gates would enable the car to, to easily move in and out and open doors and walk around. Okay, thank you. Explain to me, you, you're the architect for the project? <laughs> yes. All right. Explain to me, if you would please, um, the process of what's going to need to happen um, to move these columns. The columns are going to be torn down. What's going to happen with the rest of this structure while you're doing that? How's that going to have work? Well, you have to shore up the existing construction with temporary posts. Then we would create new foundations, have steel columns prefabricated, bring them in and erect them. and. <clears throat> So, but w w without changing the configuration. If you're going to do those things, what is the difference between making those modifications and actually modifying the structure such that, as, as has been suggested, you put the steel posts in to, uh, to support it instead? I'm not sure I understand. Okay, let me let me we back are, up. Did we you are see, going to support what's there. Did you the see the one? neighbors' um, uh, communication? Did you understand what they said? No. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Stedman uh, spoke, and they said uh, that they had suggested they weren't able to communicate with you beforehand, but it's in the record. Although I don't um, know why. Uh, and and but they said, what about the idea of using steel steel posts? not posts, steel beams in lieu of posts. Do you consider that as an option? I don't know how, to, how a steel beam can replace a column. A post is a vertical element. A beam is a horizontal element. We, I understand we, that. But if you're going to make modifications, if you're going to change this structure, you're going to change how it's supported, where it's supported. Is that an option to take the burden off the neighbors? Instead of going closer to their property with these posts, what about the idea of an, of an alternative support system? Well, I can't imagine one. I've thought about it. And we're, the columns being closer to the neighbor doesn't really affect the neighbor. It just affects our ability to move in and out of the carport. That's not entirely true. It affects the neighbor because if approved, oh, okay. it affects the neighbor because if approved, then it makes that encroachment forever legal. So that's how it affects them. If, if, Understood. So that's again, we are only asking for approval of an existing condition. Yeah, but which we inherited. You said you don't see how it affects the neighbor. What I'm saying is the way it affects them is right now it exists un until modified. Once modified, you're asking to vest it. That means that it can be rebuilt. Right now, if it blew away in a storm, you can't do that. So it affects them with the permanence. And and to to sort of piggyback on what Mr. Pastor just said, we've acknowledged that this structure is old. That it's getting to the point where it's reaching its useful life. Um, so you're suggesting to revitalize that, bring it up, spruce it up, but keep that existing structure where it's at a zero lot line and the neighbors are clearly saying that it's burdening to them. They're okay with it as it is, they don't like it, but it is what it is. But, but your changes are... are, are we're, we're trying to make it safe, is what we're trying to do. All right. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, your site plan indicates. Sorry. Your uh, site plan indicates a proposed column location that isn't on the property line. It appears to be set in. No, oh, it's not. On, right, it's not on the property line. Okay. It's so why are to. why are you requesting uh, a zero setback if the column is not? I mean. If it's not on a property line, where is it? Because your site plan doesn't indicate any dimension. We're, we're requesting <coughs> a zero lot line because the current roof extends to the property line. Which well, we I think the roof change. can without violating a setback. 
um, because you're allowed to have overhangs. So the, That's true. my question is, your column is not on the property line, correct? Correct. Where is it? <laughs> it's, it's approximately two feet away. Okay. So um, if now if it's two feet away, yeah. Um, one of the one of the residents or neighbors, I mean, uh, showed us a very nice photograph of what appears to be a gable roof, pitching front to back. Is that correct? Yes. And then this additional shed that was added, and it's your intention to keep some form of that shed. Is that correct? Well, we're going to keep it as it is and just support it properly. Okay. Is there any reason why that shed couldn't go away, and the gable roof? Because it appears, I'm looking at the site plan, there's a dotted line. Yes, that dotted line. That dotted line is the overhang, is that correct? That's the edge of the existing gable roof. Okay. So it appears that if the column is another foot away from the existing overhang, yeah. is that correct? About, yes. Is there any reason why the overhang couldn't be extended out another foot or a foot and a half to bear, as you said, bear on the, new, the proposed column locations, and you would then be two feet on your side yard instead of zero. Can that not, and then the shed portion totally go away, which would solve the access in and out of the car problem. Is that not doable? Uh, I can't say no, it's a matter of cost. I mean, you, that would be asking uh, for okay. us to spend I mean, that's, a lot more I mean, money. We, we have to ask these questions yeah. to hear what the hardships are. Yeah. And unfortunately, cost is not a hardship. Do you have any other hardship that you haven't shared with us yet other than you just want to keep the shed because it's there, the shed roof because it's there? Yeah, I mean, our approach to this was to, to, to take the existing conditions, improve them as necessary to make it safe right. and usable without okay. making changes to the footprint of the existing structure. We well, were told but in this case, you are proposing a change because you're, you're moving the columns, the existing structural that doesn't columns. Change, that doesn't change the footprint, sir. We're not changing the footprint. Well, by, uh, it doesn't I change the roof overhang. It literally changes the foot. It does right. change the footprint by definition. What the, touches the ground. The footprint is what touches the ground. That's the distinction I'm, I'm asking I, about. In my, my understanding, the footprint is the perimeter of a Structure. Well, roof overhangs don't count in a footprint. By Tampa zone, correct, staff? Well, by all counts. I mean, overhangs, I mean, you're allowed to have encroachments into setbacks for overhangs. Uh, Miss Anthony, correct? That's a question, please. To Wanda Anthony Land Development, you are allowed to have three feet encroachment for eaves and gutters. Three, three feet. Up to three feet. Up to three feet. Okay, all right. I have. Uh, uh, those are my been questions. Please. I'm sorry. Oh, no. uh, so if you're moving the posts and the roof isn't connected, how is the roof going to stay on? The roof will be connected to those columns. The columns but, will have, you don't see it in the plan, but the columns will have a, a diagonal okay. member Thank you. that supports that uh, existing roof to make it stay. Thank you. Mr. Professor. Um, I'm going to ask this now for efficiency because I'm going to get here eventually anyway. The, I think, intent of vesting existing is when you have non-conforming historical structures, et cetera. I think it's very clear that the shed aluminum roof is not part of that historical structure. It very likely was not permitted when it was built and was not compliant when it was added. So my question is, got to be careful. We haven't heard testimony of that. I said very likely. Well, so my question is, if we go down a road where um, it looks like the board is not willing to approve the zero foot setback and an alternative is offered where you vest the existing historical structure and not the shed roof, it would allow you to move the columns to the very edge of the gable roof that exists today that's very clearly historical, um, but not past the edge of that gable roof. I'm not saying that that would pass either, but if a scenario like that was offered, do you have authority to accept something like that? Not at this time, no. I would okay. have to discuss that with the owners. <coughs> All right. But you understand what I'm saying? If you remove the shed roof entirely and you move the columns out to the very edge of the gable roof, it gives you what appears to be another two feet or so of width. 
you're retaining the historical structure and historical setback without this likely unpermitted aluminum roof addition, which is more, I think, the intent of vesting. Yeah. Mr. V, do, do you have a question? I do have a question that's uh, kind of away from that side of the house. So I believe the carport is on the west side of the property. Is that correct? So okay. I'm just looking yeah. at the summary of the request, and we're looking for both side yard setbacks to go from seven feet to zero feet. And I'm looking at on the on the diagram the east Excuse side. Me. There doesn't appear to be any sort of miss. Well, Ms. Anthony. Anthony. in development. That was a typo. Oh, okay. All right. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. It's a good question. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions, Ms. Long? Okay, seeing none, uh, applicant, you have five minutes for rebuttal. I can simply request that your approval of the uh, variances as written. Uh, we believe we've shown the hardship and that uh, we have a plan to make the existing conditions safer than they are now, including uh, handling the drainage issue that was brought up. Does that your yes, it does. You can turn your mic on. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Both side yard setbacks reduced from seven to zero. Okay. No, she just said that was a typo. The both is a typo. So it should say reduce the west side yard. Yes, just okay. the west side. Oh, that That's does make a okay. Then I'm I'm done. Okay. Any motion? Um, I'll just say I would support vesting. All the structures on the property with the condition that the aluminum shed roof um, be removed or not vested however you want to handle that it already asked the petitioner they're not either open to accepting that or able to accept that so I don't know that that's a motion worth making although we could approve it and they could go back and move the columns legally as long as they get rid of that roof and if they decide not to then they could <clears throat> apply again or whatever I don't know how to do that, but my point is um, I will not support keeping that shed roof that's clearly not part of the original <coughs> structure all the way to the zero lot line. No way. Any other comments? I, uh, I have maybe a question or a dilemma for me, however you want to think of it. Um, so you're willing to support the carport as originally created, sure. but that means removing the roof, getting rid of those metal pillars yeah. if if that's what happened you know we vest everything else and they don't like it can they go to city council and appeal that one piece i think the answer is yes i think they should be able to i'm not asking you no, I, I believe they can yeah okay do you know any, if if a person any interested party that has participated in in tonight's proceeding has uh, any disagreement with the board's decision or action tonight that would be subject to review by city council. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I didn't hear good hardship testimony on the uh, seven to zero uh, reduction. I think that there's there, there was maybe some room for something less than, I mean, more than zero, two or three feet. Uh, it's not detailed or dimensioned well enough on this site plan to know exactly what that dimension would be. Uh, so yeah, I'm not in favor of supporting the uh, west side reduction. I'm gonna throw in my two cents here. I, I don't think that this is a very well thought out plan overall. Um, and I don't understand how uh, the, the support is intended to really improve this um, as a consequence, I don't see the need um, for the variance at all. If they're, if the concern is, well, I don't like the modifications that they're making, I don't see a need to approve any of this. Um, the building is situated as it is. It exists as it is. 
um, and, and I, I'm not in support of any changes at this point. If they want to make a change that makes sense, I'll be behind um, vesting some of this, but I don't see the need to do that as it's situated now. Um, think, think about it this way and see, see what you think. Um, if we vest the existing structure with the exception of that roof, we're not essentially changing anything. We're just vesting what's there. That gives them the allowance to move columns underneath that roof as long as it doesn't project outside of the current you know, roof outline, um, which gives them two more feet of width to park a car reasonably. Very easy to do. Or we deny it, and they've got to come back and do this again. So we could either give them an option where they could potentially resolve this without anybody's opposition, or they're going to have to come back there's just third, to get that same result. Probably. There's a third option, um, and that is that we open um, the the gentleman who's here is a representative. He doesn't have authority to make uh, the changes that have been discussed. Um, so the third option is we open it up. We ask him if they're willing to um, continue this to uh, whenever the next available hearing date is, such that he'll have the opportunity. The owners can actually be here. Um, and they will have the opportunity to talk to these neighbors who they haven't had a time, chance to chat with because they've tried to reach out and he says he hasn't been, he hasn't heard from anybody. Well, they're all here tonight. They'll have that opportunity to talk. So the third option is we push it down the road, let them try and make those changes in a way that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and, and they can come back another time instead of starting the process over after a potential denial. True. If somebody would like to make a motion to open the public hearing. Or we could, you okay. know, approve it and they could potentially just do that on their own yeah. and not have to come back. In, in any well, you, yeah. you, I mean, I could make that and we could see if it goes. Okay. okay. If, if it I'm doesn't asked, go, then if we somebody would like to make a motion, please he do. Wants to make a motion. Mr. All right, I'll try it. <clears throat> I move that variance request for case VRB <clears throat> 1992, located at 2608 West Morrison Avenue, as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing, for a reduction in the west side yard from seven feet to zero feet, and the rear setback from three feet to zero feet, and the building separation to from five feet to one feet, with encroachment for eaves and gutters, with the following conditions that the existing accessory structure and gabled carport roof be vested with their current um, dimensions and that the aluminum shed roof um, is not included in that vesting. Uh, clarification, yeah. you said from seven feet to zero feet? Yeah, yeah, with the condition that only the gabled roof's dimensions can remain and that the aluminum shed roof is not vested. Whatever that dimension is. Well, again, we have to approve by site plan, so. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. That's a very confusing motion. Yeah. Okay. In my mind, I'm not clear at all. Uh, especially when you address the seven to zero. Yeah. Because the well, that's because that's what the motion, that's what they no, I understand, but, says. But so you have to the site plan it. isn't dimension, so we don't even know where the existing columns are. So about columns. What? Well, it's about it them. No. No, it is because the existing columns. It, uh, I'm assuming the existing columns meet the seven foot setback requirement. Mm -mm. So. Um, I don't believe. I wouldn't that. assume that. It's uh, a 1920 something. It probably has yeah. a three foot setback. Okay. Well, because you don't have a site plan, it's detailed. That's okay. true. Okay. So, <laughs> but is it relevant? It's existing. Let's or have a second on that. Uh, see if there's a second. Yeah, is there a second on? Okay. Now, would you read? I didn't would you restate it. your I'm motion? Sorry. Yeah. Please, please restate your motion. <clears throat> I got a sequence. I'm With sorry. the condition. Uh, what did I say? That the dimensions of the existing accessory structure and gable-roofed carport remain as is today. And that the aluminum shed roof is excluded from that vesting. That said variance as conditioned be granted based on the applicant presenting competent substantial evidence in the record of this public hearing of a necessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 2780 of the city code, specifically that they have a 1926, I believe, structure that does not have a reasonably wide carport for parking a modern vehicle and getting out of it 
and would like to um, remedy that by moving columns um, under the existing roof overhang of the gabled carport roof. Second. Second by Ms. Rubia. Any more discussion? Question? Nope. Okay. Aye. So, Aye. Mr. Chair, can oh, I get ahead. a point of clarification sure. on that motion? Uh, because you had stated that that the carport remain. Is it is it your motion that um, if that carport were to be re removed, that the current si setback would be enforced, or that the new setback, as created by the roof line? would then be uh, the setback and if so do we have a dimension for that no. on, on the site plan Which my motion is for the existing structure as it is today okay, not for I, reconstruction I just, of it th this non-conforming question comes up quite a bit sure. in the in this issue of vesting something that's been there for quite some time and I, I have the non-conforming structure code section, and I thought it might be helpful just to read it so that um, everyone kind of understands what someone is entitled to when they have a non-conforming structure. And it says that a, a structure that's non-conforming due to non-compliance with dimensional requirements of the official schedule of regulations and that is used for, uh, and is used for a use that is permitted in the district may remain provided that any structural change to the structure shall not increase the degree of nonconformity. Structural changes which decrease or do not affect the degree of nonconformity shall be permitted. Um, so if, you're, if the intent of your motion is that once that carport is destroyed, they have to come to current uh, code, that's already allowed if it is a nonconforming structure. Right. Um, and they would be allowed to modify that nonconforming structure so long as those modifications decrease um, the, the degree of the nonconformity. That's already allowed for something that is grandfathered in and nonconforming. Okay. So then the question would be, the question would be, and I don't know if we have the answer here. If you look at the actual structure that we're trying to vest, the original structure, and you wanted to move the columns two feet closer to the side setback, the roof line doesn't change. But the actual columns would move closer. Now that's better than the aluminum roof that's there today, but it is worse than the existing condition of when that was built. So does that say that you're making it worse or that you're improving it? It depends on how you look at it. So I don't know right. the answer to that. That would, that would be a, a, dis, a determination for the zoning administrator. Okay. Which is why we're here to give clarity. and. So that's my concern uh, with the motion. So we have a first, I mean, we had a motion, condition, Mr. Villa, you seconded it? All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Nay. So it was two to four. So it failed. That motion failed. Would somebody like to make a new motion? Yes. Okay. I move we open the public hearing to ask him if he would continue it. All righty, applicant, please come to the podium. No, at least I'm not. <laughs> I'll second. Um, the question is, uh, would you would you be willing to come back next month, uh, answer a lot of the questions that came up, provide more detailed information? Uh, on the exact location of the current columns uh, and where the proposed future columns are going to be located. None of that's on this site plan. Um, is that something you'd be willing to do? November. Excuse me, November. I'm being told November. It's not October. It would be the November meeting. Yes. The answer, answer is yes, you would? Is yes. Um, and I, I'd also like to respond to the uh, question that came up at one point, would I be authorized to simply remove the shed roof and extend the existing roof just enough to reach where we would like to put the columns? See, we it, in no way can we meet the seven-foot setback, right? That's not possible. But 
um, I, I, I would be, and I think the owners would be willing to discuss taking the existing shed roof and just extending it a little bit. Okay, so well, in order to do that, you still need to have better drawings uh, with more information on them. I, I, that's, I have many more drawings. Okay. I didn't, you didn't they bring weren't them tonight. required, so I didn't okay. submit them. But All right, well, I, at this point, your option is to come back in November. Is that something you'd be willing okay. to do? Yes. Okay, uh, so, so be it. And, and talk to the neighbor. Talk to as many neighbors as you can. No okay. problem. And, uh, I want to compliment you. You, you guys have had some brain-wrenching <laughs> issues tonight. <laughs> yeah, we try not to. Believe me. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, uh, do we need to vote on that? I would like to hearing? say beforehand I think we need to vote on that. that even that idea of extending the existing roof, I would not support. That's not what vesting is. Well, again, so, I, okay. I just want them to know that before okay. they come back and think that, that we all said that that was a good idea. Yeah, we're not promising or guaranteeing any solution tonight. You, it'll, whatever happens in November will be based on the testimony and the evidence that's presented in November. Okay. Do we need a vote? I on do that? believe a motion for okay. that continuance. So I need a motion for a continuance to November. I move that we continue this to November. What's the date? Uh, November. Be November twelfth. November twelfth, two thousand nineteen. Yes. Second. There's second by Mr. Feldman. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Uh, one nay. <laughs> okay. So five to one. We'll see you in November. All right. Last case. But not least, BRB 1993, 3210 West San Nicholas Street. Come on to Anthony Land Development. This is application number VRB 1993. The property address is 3210 West San Nicholas Street. The request is as follows. The applicant is seeking to reduce the front yard setback from 25 feet, and it should read from 25 feet to 15.11 feet. Reduce the west side yard setback from 7 feet to 4.2 feet, the rear yard setback from 7 feet to 6.9, and reduce the rear yard setback from 20 feet to 4.1 feet. The applicant is seeking to construct a new front porch and a new rear porch. <coughs> the property is zoned RS60 and was purchased in 2014. The existing single family residence was constructed in 1989. Here's an aerial of the site, West San Nicholas Street. And here's the subject property. Here's a view facing the front of the property. This is a view facing west. A view facing east. Site plan. So this is the request for the front setback with the um, the front porch. Let me see if I can. And this is the 1511 that they're requesting in the front reduction. Then they're also re requesting to reduce the side yard setbacks and the rear yard setback from 20 feet to 4 feet. Let me see. As you can see, it's an irregular shaped lot in the rear, and the 20 foot setback is here. And they're requesting to reduce it to the four foot, four one, which would be about right here. And this is for the rear porch addition. Are there any questions for staff? Uh, just a quick question. It goes back to the definition of footprint. Uh, the front porch 
and we'll hear testimony as to what it's going to look like. But mm -hmm. isn't the dimension to the vertical structure that would support the porch roof? They're showing it to what looks like a step or something, or a curb, or or maybe it's a beam. I don't, I don't know. It might be a beam, but if it's not, wouldn't the setback be measured to the closest vertical structure to a column, for instance? Um, Tawanda Anthony Land Development should be measured to a column. Okay. Um, they Move up to a three-foot projection. Correct, unless the, it, the stairs are projecting if they're over three feet. Oh, okay, if they're over three feet. Yes. Okay, that might be that might be an issue. Okay, thank you. Applicant, have you name, address, and have you been served? Sure. Horace Massey, Hillward Henderson, 101 East Kennedy Boulevard here in Tampa, and I have been sworn. I'm representing uh, the owners of 3210 West San Nicholas, uh, William and Ansley Cassidy. And um, I have, uh, maybe I, I don't know, how do you move the, the focus here a little bit out? Um, anyway, I have colored the site plan to show the existing house in yellow and then the pro proposed porch additions in green to try to clarify. Thank you. <laughs> What, what, it, what is existing and what we're asking for. Um, I am not the architect and so I can't, I, I can't explain to you exactly where the vertical columns are and the distance is. We are requesting 15 feet 11 inches based on what we could interpret based on the architect's site plan. We don't have the architect here with us tonight. Um, I, you know, obviously we are requesting an open entry porch to provide some cover for folks entering their home for safety reasons, some from inclement weather. The only reason we would need to come before you relative to the front porch addition really is because there's going to be a roof on top of it. Um, I do think uh, uh, kind of germane to this variance request um, is the fact that this portion of San Nicholas is an unusually wide uh, right of way. Um, here's the plat that creates San Nicholas here. And you'll see that um, San Nicholas, let's see if I can put it up here. Yeah, it's right there, it's 70 feet wide. Can you see it? The house is right here, okay. It's not part of this plat, but San Nicholas was created by the plat to the north. It's 70 feet wide. Most of the other streets in this uh, area are 35 feet from Bendelo, 50 feet for Oakmont, 50 feet for Brookline. Um, so you have an unusually wide residential street in this area. So even with a variance of reducing the front yard setback from 25 feet to 15 feet, 11 inches for the new front porch, you have almost 28 feet from the front property line to the back of curb for the paved area of San Nicholas. So you have a, between 43 and 44 feet of green space there. So you're not encroaching into a huge, you're not, we're not creating a front porch that, that creates an intrusion into a large front yard. We're res generally respecting, frankly, the setback, uh, given the size of San Nicholas in that location. Um, then relative to the uh, porch on the rear, as Ms. Anthony pointed out, this is an unusually shaped lot. It is an L shape in the back, 14 feet of this platted lot is owned by the property owner to the south, which creates a situation where this portion of the porch is meets the, the required 20 foot rear yard setback, but this portion of the porch comes within about four feet and one inch of the, uh, the rear property line, just this portion right here. And so that's the reason for the uh, setback request on the rear here. And again, both these areas are existing. We're not changing really the use of these areas. This is an outdoor paved entryway already. We're just asking that an open porch with the covered roof be added to the front and the rear. This is a paved area with decking. It's outdoor recreational space. It will remain that. It will not be enclosed. We're not increasing the air conditioned uh, size of the, of, the, of the house. And going through this whole site plan exercise, um, we also realized this house was built in 1989. It was permitted and CO'd by the city of Tampa but there are some minor encroachments into the uh, required zoning setback area on the rear 
the side and the front. And so we are asking that you vest the existing structure. We are not asking for a general variance that would allow us to, to build any additional space in the side yard, either side yard, and other than the porches in the rear and the front to add any space, we're asking that it vest what's in the, what's vested is constructed now. And I'll go through the site plan a little bit here to show you uh, where we have some encroachments into the required uh, zoning setbacks as they now exist. You have a bay window here that is 16 feet, nine inches, right on the rear property line. Um, you have a uh, screen porch that's 10 feet, eight inches from the rear property line. Then on the side here, you have a fireplace that's four feet, two inches and a quarter from the uh, west property line. Um, the house itself appears to be not quite seven feet um, uh, from the, the west property line. At the, uh, the northwest corner, it reads six feet, uh, two inches and a quarter. And on the south, uh, the north southwest corner, excuse me, it's six feet seven and a half in inches from the uh, west property line. Then on the east side, you have six feet, nine, inch, nine and a half inches and six feet, 10 inches here. It varies a little bit. And then on the front, it's close to 25 feet, but it's about 24 and a half feet at different locations here. So we're asking that these minor encroachments into the zoning setbacks that probably occurred when the house was constructed in 89 at, and was permitted and sealed by the city of Tampa be uh, be vested. Um, for the record, my client purchased the property in 2014, more than 25 years after the house's house was constructed. Um, quickly, it's been a long evening. Um, we do think that, um, again, that we do meet the variance criteria. You, we're asking again for an open air porch, covered porch area in the front for safety reasons and to provide some coverage from the elements. That's really the sole reason for that. The rear porch, again, we're not changing the use. And the only reason we really need the variance is because of the unusual shape of the lot in the rear, because of the L shape in the rear. We're asking for the uh, uh, variance to be granted to vest the existing structure as it was constructed in 1989. It's not self-imposed. The, the house, the Cassie's purchased the house in 10, 2014. Uh, we do not believe this will interfere or injure the health and safety and welfare of others. We have three letters of support um, that I'll go ahead and can into the record now. Um, and plus the existing encroachments have existed for, again, for more than 25 years without any complaints or problems that we're aware of. Um, we believe this is in harmony with the code and comprehensive plan as it allows an adaptive reuse of an existing house. And we believe that when you, you weigh everything, substantial ju justice will be done by granting the variance. It would divest the existing home as it was constructed. Um, it was not, they were not originally constructed by my client. And the only new items are covered porches that we're not adding to the air conditioned area where this will allow us to more better, better, better utilize the outdoor area really of the home. So of a lot. Um, I'm here if you have any questions and uh, that's it. Uh, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak uh, on this application, either for or against? Please state your name, address, and if you've been sworn. My name is Brenda Korn, 3212 San Nicholas, and yes, I now have been sworn in. Um, we are neighbors on the west side, my husband and I, and watched this home go up in 1989 and obviously the city missed a few things like the fireplace being four and a half feet from our property line. We have no problem and totally support what the Cassidy's want to do. I think it will add a lot to the entrance, especially because we have that extra front footage on our, our, our property. Our big concern is grandfathering the property, investing what's there is great, but giving it a, a setback on the side of four and a half feet that could go into perpetuity is something we don't want to see. So that's our only concern. If somebody came in and wanted to build a porch within four, four and a half feet down the road of our property, that we would be opposed to. What they're doing now is great. It's going to add a lot to the home. So we support that, just however it can be worded, that 
it's vested what is there but you can't go four four and a half feet for another property or on the front as well so thank you to speak. Okay, seeing none, board, do you have any questions for the applicant or, and or staff? Wait, Ms. Long? I think you've already, this is for the applicant, and I think you've already answered this, but Mr. you... Sure, be glad to. Yeah, for Mr. Massett, right, excuse me. That's right. Um, they have agreed never to enclose that front porch? Yes. That's we what I thought. We will agree to that as a, as a condition to this. Okay, cool, thank you. Cool. Add, Mr. Pastor? Uh, I just wanted to commend you on your extreme honesty and the inches of encroachment on each side. No builder builds it exactly to the line. So I, you're, I'm aware of that. Your two and three inches is uh, I have not seen on the on this board before. So I appreciate that. And again, for the record, in, in response to the neighbor's concern, we are asking only that the existing home as it encroaches be vested we're not asking for any ability to add anything else on the side of the house and the only additions that we're asking for are for the open porch on the front and the rear as depicted on the site plan as we submit it okay uh, miss anthony i've got a question um, i believe it's rs60 correct correct okay so the zoning does allow for open porches by right on RS 50s and I'm a little vague on the RS 60 rule because I've heard others say that it's it's allowed if if requested by the you know to the VRB so if, it, if they ask for it does that mean we have to give it to them come on Anthony in development. if it's a open unenclosed front porch All right they in, do have to request a um, Variance, but it, it is an administrative process done in house. If they're asking for the encroachment up to the eight feet in the so RS60, because they're going district. beyond eight feet, correct? That's why they're okay. before you. All right, but if yard. they weren't, if they were only going to eight feet, then they're, they wouldn't have had to come and ask us for it. They could have just gone to staff. Correct. Is that is that what I'm understanding? Correct. Okay. Hence the reason for my question about where are setbacks measured to. Um, so, unfortunately, Mr. Massey's already testified that he's not an architect and he doesn't, or doesn't have the ability to speak to the structural location of the columns that are shown on the site plan. Is that correct, Mr. Massey? That's correct. I, the only thing I would add to what Ms. Anthony said is that in the RS-60, it is, it's, you have to ask for an alternative design request that then is noticed to all the property owners if there's the open record period it's not an automatic oh, okay. administrative All right. so it's similar in terms of noticing neighbors right. and whatnot okay right. is that correct, Ms. correct. Anthony? okay all right um, and I guess Miss Long didn't ask the question if if the board were to approve the rear porch setback and put a condition that it never be enclosed is that something that the applicant would be okay with yes sir we're fine with that okay any other questions for anybody for rebuttal, Mr. Massey. Um, I'm going to weigh the rebuttal. Hopefully that, that will work well. It's a late night, and I'm yes. not making a lot of sense right now as I try to put okay, it all together. Okay, thank anyway, you. So. All right, I'll move to close the public hearing. And ask for the I just want to make one comment for the neighbor's benefit, that if we were to vest the, I think it's a chimney or whatever it is that's there, it only vests it for the footprint of the literal chimney which could be rebuilt in that exact footprint. So it doesn't, it does not extend it along the whole property line. Okay, here we go. Um, move that the variance request uh, for case VRB 19-93 located at 3210 West San Nicholas Street as depicted on the site plan presented at public hearing 
for a uh, reduced front yard setback from 25 feet to 15 feet 11 inches, reduce the west side yard setback from 7 feet to 4 feet 2 inches, and to reduce the east side yard setback from 7 feet to 9 or 6 feet 9 inches, and reduce the rear yard setback from 20 feet to 4 feet 1 inch uh, with an encroachment for the eaves and gutters with the following conditions. Um, that the front and rear porch will never be enclosed. That said, variance as conditioned be granted based upon the applicant presenting competent and substantial evidence in the record and at this public hearing of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 24-80 of the city code, specifically that um, there is an irregular lot and the House was built before current code. Oh, okay. Is that it? Eighty-nine. And that there's an unusually large right of way in the front. All right. So we have we have our first motion by uh, Miss Hertak. And seconded by Ms. Long, and no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Been approved six to zero.